Hi there, my name is Max McDougall. I'm going to be making a series of videos demonstrating the MA Lighting Scan Commander. Uh, this is my personal desk. Um, I've owned this since the uh, later 2000s, 2008-ish, somewhere in there. Um, this is uh, what got me into lighting. Um, you know, around this time the MA2 was actually being released. Uh, I didn't know what an MA2 was. Uh, now I program an MA2, but um, that's a story for another time. Um, I find this to be uh, a historical desk in a lot of ways, and I'll go over um, some of the reasons I feel that way. Um, I was six years old at the time when this was released in 1992. Um, so a lot of the information I've gathered um, from talking to other industry professionals that were around at the time and... Um, you know, just uh, knowledge that's been been passed down. Uh, so if there's anything that sounds a little bit off, feel free to um, make some comments. And uh, I'd love to hear your insight if you're around uh, during this desk's heyday. So uh, a couple of reasons why I feel that this is an important uh, desk and signifies an evolution in the lighting control industry is because before this time, um, most of the moving light control was uh, proprietary systems with specialized technicians that you had to um, kind of buy together as a rental package. Uh, they weren't really available to midsize to even larger production houses. Uh, you know, you, if you were using Verilites, you were hiring Verilite techs with an artisan console. Um, if you had, uh, you know, icon uh, lights, you'd have the LSD icon system um and it was uh it was really a direct to end client kind of deal i mean lighting designers would hire these companies and you got the whole package um you know during this time you you had some control systems that were proprietary that were affordable uh and production houses were using um a lot of those uh, controllers that came with those lights were dedicated controllers for that light, and you'd have to get a different module for each uh, type of light in your system. And, you know, we had just finally agreed on a standard for uh, control. Um, not a very good one, I might add, but that's what we're stuck with, DMX-512. Uh, and in 1990, they loosened up uh, some of the timings, and um, USITT published the... Uh, DMX-512-1990 specifications. Um, and at that time, a lot of lights uh, were being released that had DMX control, not only their proprietary protocol, but then they were offering a DMX control option as well. Um, so this was a great time for the scan commander uh, to be released. Uh, there weren't many decent solutions. There were other people working on desks. Uh, another major one at the time was the whole hog system by uh, Flying Pig. Uh, or digital lighting desk company, I believe at the time they were calling themselves. Um, and the whole hog was, had a whole lot more features in a lot of ways, key, uh, a little bit more complicated Q stack, um, features. Uh, but those were also sort of unattainable. Not a lot of people had them. They were more expensive. Um, and I don't know enough of that history, uh, to go too into detail, but maybe I'll make a future uh, video touching on, um, on some of the features on the whole hog. Cause that's also a very important desk. Um, at any rate, uh, it's a little bit of history on this thing. When this came out, it was a big deal. Um, it, it treats lights in a way that people weren't used to, and breaking things down into the features of the lights. It sort of standardized everything. Um, why I personally like the desk, uh, more than just because this is the first one I ever used, um, I find it to still be one of the greatest desks for busking out a live um, electronic event. Um, I got started doing techno parties and uh, warehouse raves and things like that. And um, I can rock out on this thing like it's a 909 drum machine or something. It's amazing what you can do um, after you get a bunch of memories in here and how you can manipulate it. And a lot of the things I really like about the Scan Commander um, have been featured and, and added on in the MA1 and now the MA2. And... Um, a lot of the programming philosophy in their current desks uh, came from this. And so you can really feel the MA DNA um, when you're using this desk. So anyway, I think that's a little, enough ranting and raving about the history. I've got more. Um, maybe I can make a, a separate video to attach to this um, to go over some of those details. Um, but for now, I just want to break down um, the 
what features are available, um, IO, uh, how everything's laid out. Um, I will be breaking this down into individual videos for the specific features. I'll make one on creating presets. I'll make one on memories um, and how we filter data in, with the matrix into th those memories. Um, I'll be making one for the sequence playbacks. Uh, I have all sorts of crazy macro foo that I wanna put into its own video. Uh, might even touch on some time code and some stuff. I really wanna just, uh, publish all this so it's available to everybody. Uh, there's a lot of things that actually aren't um, uh, detailed in the manual very well or at all. And so uh, at some point, I'll be getting to those. Um, so for now, let's, uh, let's break her down. Uh, top left here, we have our sound input. Um, top right, we have a key. This uh, will lock programming or it will completely lock the desk. Nothing uh, can be changed. Um, lock programming, pull the key. If this was a club install or something, you don't want anything getting screwed with. Um, one of the greatest features of this desk, I think, is uh, this feature. You're up. Show is up. If I bring uh, some stuff up on the visualizer here, I'm gonna kill it, bring it back up. Uh, that's literally a one second, and you're, you're rocking and rolling. This could be packed up in a truck, um, turn on and you're back where you started, uh, which is pretty amazing. I don't, I don't know of any other desk that starts this f that fast, um, period. Uh, so yeah, right here you've got your uh, memory card. This is a SRAM card, uh, 256K is the largest you can use on the Scan Commander. Um, this has volatile memory, there's a battery here. Um, if you pull this battery out, you have about six, uh, 30 seconds to put a new one in, otherwise you lose everything. Um, if you want to back this up, uh, give me a second here. If you wanna back this up, uh, you need one of these guys. Um, this is a memory card interface, uh, serial RS-232. We've got an old, uh, 386 laptop I hooked this baby up to and run some MA software. If anybody needs that software for any reason, feel free to send me a message and I'll send it to them. Um, but there you go. That's, uh, that's how you do it. You can save maybe about, mm, depends on the size of your show file, but I, I usually have about five or six shows on here with some extras. Uh, that's about all you're going to get. Um, these are your soft keys here. You have your main menu, you access different things. These soft keys are how you access presets, for example. Um, all of these uh, squares here represent uh, where labels would be for the, for the buttons, and then you hit the buttons. Um, so these are your three encoders. You have um, fine control in the center and coarse adjustment on the outer ring. Um, to our right here, this is your feature selection. This is how you access presets. Um, you also have some uh, neat features, uh, freeze and sample, which I'll go over later. Memory playback section, you have four pages. Uh, this bottom bank here are basically fixed executors if you're used to MA2. Um, these are always fixed here, uh, no matter what page you're on. Uh, this is a list button. Some of my buttons are, uh, the silk screening is rubbed off, uh, so I'll kind of talk that through those uh, list. Um, if you hold it, it will bring up your labels for this uh, playback matrix. Um, if you double tap it, it'll hold, um, it'll hold that screen up for you. Um, this is a rate fader, also lets you cross fade between these memories. Um, scan selection, you have 16 moving lights uh, that can be used with this desk. They can be of different manufacturers, um, but you only have 16. You also have extra channels, which are um, access to the feature selection. Um, those actually uh, give you quite a bit more. Um, you have, uh, I believe it's 48 um, per extra channel, and that breaks down uh, for three channels per selection here. Um, we'll get into that in a later video. These are your scan groups. Um, Brightness masters, you assign groups to these buttons. This brightness master um, 
think of it as a group master on an MA2, um, they're always going to be brightness masters. That's going to be a group, and this, and this is going to control the brightness, and this will be a flash. It's always going to be that way, whatever you store here. If you need more lights, more moving heads, um, you can buy an expansion unit, which is basically the MA scan commander and a brain um, that gets connected. Um, and that will allow you expand. Um, you can also add more scan commanders. Um, when you do that, you can actually select the lights and then go over to the next scan commander, select some more lights, and then save them all to a group. And now this brightness master in this group will uh, select um, everything you've selected across all of the desks or expansion units. Uh, and that's how you'd control that. You'd still have to select individual um, lights on the other desks. Um, but that's, that's what they were working with back in the mid-90s. Over here we have our sequence playback. This is uh, almost like a sequence executor, basically. Um, to, again, go back to MA2 uh, terminology, with I, I assume most uh, viewers that are watching this video at least have some familiarity with uh, MA2, or MA1 for that matter. Um, you have uh, this matrix here that... Uh, allows you to to create a Q stack basically with individual timings uh, for each step. Um, I should mention over here, these are uh, chasers with the two LEDs on each of these uh, buttons here. You, uh, you have six chasers on each page and then plus these two fixed. Um, chasers, you can't change in individual timing between steps, but you can change the uh, crossfade between steps and the time. Um, so that's neat. Uh, the sequence playbacks will uh, record all of your data, but uh, they, they can also reference uh, memory playbacks, and we'll get to that in a later video as well. Um, this board uses presets, just like a modern desk. You assign presets, you record those to memories uh, or sequence playbacks. Uh, if you update those presets, that will update across um, all of your storage positions. Um, Nothing has changed a whole lot there, same way we do it now. Um, on the back of this desk, we have audio input. Um, audio can be used to trigger steps in a sequence playback. Uh, you can get kind of funky uh, with that, and we'll get to that when, when I make the video on sequence playbacks. Um, what's cool about this is there's an analog filter and uh, a hold f feature. So if you had like a best example would be, say, some electronic music where you have a four to the floor uh, beat going and you want it to only happen on that second drum beat you can uh, tune in the kick drum so this light will start flashing you bring up your level control and then you just move this delay fader this hold fader or a hold pot um, up uh, until it's it's holding until every second kick drum uh, of course, you have to dynamically be adjusting this, and um, that's that's part of the spinning plates operation of this desk. So, uh, you also have linear timecode input, and you can actually bring in timecode and record uh, your uh, button pushes uh, live, and go back and adjust it. Very similar to how a uh, how a timecode timeline in an MA2 works. Uh, surprisingly, um, it works really well actually um, this also has MIDI in and out um, that's actually uh, how you connect um, multiple scan commanders um, the uh, MIDI implementation is really weird so if you're planning on just plugging in a MIDI controller and triggering things it's a little bit more complicated than that I might touch on that later um, let's see here there's a contact closure input uh, so you could connect switches, uh, whatnot. There's also a foot switch control, um, which will allow you to do a remote go with a foot switch. Cool, all right, um, you have a keyboard down here. This is how you label everything. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's general layout. Um, I'll go more into detail of individual features like these set times and crossfade settings and all of these different step modes uh, when we do those in individual videos. Um, I'm just going to quickly, uh, before the end of this video, step through um, some of your setup options. Um, if you go to setup here, you notice that we have a make lamp type, lamp type DMX patch. Uh, for the patching video, I'll go through this, but this allows you to make your own fixture profile in the desk, and it's actually really fast. Um, lamp type assigns what type of fixture is assigned to each of these buttons. Um, and then the DMX patch is where you actually set your addresses. Uh, we have readout percentile 
uh, if I turn that off, the readouts uh, become hexadecimal, um, which is actually on this desk, since you only have two digits, is really useful if you're trying to dial in presets, maybe just based off of uh, fixture profile um, for a, an, an instrument without having it in front of you. Um, I usually keep it in this mode. A lot of people don't. Um, I like actually having the hexadecimal readout because it's, it's easier for me to work with the desk. Um, clock, you know, just lets you set your time and date. Um, masters all at 100. Um, that will just put everything up for you, obviously. <laughs> Um, you can also lock your extra channels um, at 100. Um, you can also assign uh, DMX input to your extra channels. So even though these are just doing groups, you have all these extra channels. Um, and so if you had a bunch of dimmers or something and you wanted those embedded in queues, you can have a little sidecar DMX uh, desk, a little preset board or something, hook that up. And um, you can use that to uh, enter not only control those lights but enter the data if you throw that fader up on the other desk uh, it's going to be the equivalent of going to extra and picking a light i've got some stuff running here but um picking a light and and moving the encoder up and and changing that value uh so that's really convenient um let's see here uh yeah back in setup that's pretty much everything there there's a desk lamp that connects here this is how you control that this is your backlight i'm not going to mess with it too much because of the camera um we'll go into uh presets here if you hit preset that's actually how you store presets um you don't use the you do use store but it's it's not accessed the same way you go to memories and we'll go through that during the uh preset video um Backup is how you access your memory card here. Um, everything is saved to the card, um, except for what you're working on now. If I pulled this card out um, and I turn the desk off and I go back, um, everything that you're working on is saved uh, in ROM. Um, so this is really just for backing things up. There's a lot of tricks you can do with macros as far as loading parameters in. If you start running out of space, you can actually set up macros um, to delete everything and then reload it from card. So, so this is really powerful actually. Um, I'll make a whole video dedicated to that at some point. Um, so to save a whole show file, you'd hit save on all and uh, that's everything. Um, you can split that up to uh, just saving presets, just saving memories, sequences, uh, your SMPTE, um show can be saved so you can have different time coded shows um your whole setup settings uh, and then your user scans which are the custom fixture profiles you're making um again this being able to break this up uh, some people might recognize this um from uh, it's, it's it works a lot the same way as that ma2 works um where you, where you can break down uh the parts of of your show and export them and then import them back into your show um I've been running some stuff on the visualizer. I have a whole show that I'm working on. I'm actually gonna back this up real quick. So save all. Um, I'm gonna show you what you do when you start up the desk for the first time. Um, you actually hold these four buttons on top. And this is how you clear your ROM. Um, like I said, when you pull this card out, things are stored on the card, but there's still a show file in ROM here. So what you uh what you do is you can delete this is familiar to anyone that uses an ma1 or ma2 if you go to new show on an ma2 it'll ask you you'll have all the check marks of what you want to delete um this is the same window basically i mean uh do i want to clear everything or do i just want to delete memories and and you know chases and what have you um for right now i'm just going to clear all and that'll put us right into an empty desk uh, there's some funky stuff that you want to do when you start a show. Um, hold option, set all these to DMX. We'll talk about stage movement later, but for pretty much anybody starting off on this thing, you're going to want to have all of your groups or all of your fixtures selected, hit option, set it to DMX. Um, we'll talk about that later. Just trust me on that. All right. Um, so yeah, we talked about backup, uh, Remotes, this is where you assign uh, remote uh, MIDI events. Uh, touch board is, those are those contact closure inputs on the back. It's just a D, DB25 connector. Um, you can assign any memory or sequence playback to that. I believe you can even do flashes. Um, it's been a while. 
um, but I'll make a video on this. Uh, Simpty menu, this is where you record your find, or your time code. This thing works fantastic for time code shows. It's really pretty amazing. I mean, if this was the mid-90s, this had to have been just awesome. Um, so, yeah, basically that's, uh, that's most of the basic settings. Um, I don't think I really want to go too much further. Um, I can touch on... Uh, all the extra little details um, once we break this all down. So hopefully that's been informative um, to kind of get an idea of what this, how this thing's laid out and a little bit of its history. Um, I'll also mentioned there's a, there's a mouse here that's on the side. And um, when we start working on making movement presets and follow uh, mode, some of that stuff, we'll, we'll show you how that works. Uh, make sure it's Atari compatible. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. Uh, hopefully you guys subscribe and, uh, keep watching these videos. I'm going to be making quite a few of them. Thanks.